Sancho, I've missed you all so. You appear to be okay. Oh, that's a relief. At last, we can be together forever. Let's go back to hell. Ill Bleed is one of the most absurd, hilarious games I've played. There's nothing quite like it out there. I'm sure anyone who has played Ill Bleed will agree. Its gameplay and resource management aren't like anything I've encountered in a survival horror title. It nails the campy, tongue-in-cheek, B-movie horror humor. The amount of absurd scenarios and characters the game tosses your way always keeps you wondering what's coming next. And like many games from this era, it fell into obscurity and became a rarity to find. It launched as a Dreamcast exclusive in the spring of 2001. A few weeks before this, Sega discontinued hardware production of the Dreamcast. An Xbox port never came to fruition. With Sega like announcing they're bringing back several IPs, from remasters to remakes, I was hoping they'd do a remaster of Illbleed. That said, Illbleed seems to be in an IP rights limbo. It's not clear who has ownership of the IP. Unlike Blue Stinger, the studio's previous title, its ownership seems to be up in the air, leaving you with only a couple of options for playing Illbleed. Emulation, like I'm doing here, or buying a copy for an inflated price. Illbleed deserves its due. While it's a bit rough around the edges, it's one of the more memorable games I played for a variety of reasons. Henry, sleep in peace. Here's your favorite sexy doll. She'll come for you. Before we get into the absurd terrors within Ill Bleed, let's talk about another kind of terror. That being today's sponsor, Terror Bites, the evolution of horror gaming. The upcoming five-part episodic documentary featuring developers and artists who made your favorite horror games. This documentary comes from the creators of In Search of Darkness, which looked into 80s horror, and FPS, a first-person shooter documentary. The documentary features interviews from over 40 individuals, including the likes of Silent Hill series composer Akira Yamaoka, industry legends like John Romero, Ken and Roberta Williams, indie darlings who created Faith, The Unholy Trilogy, The Amnesia series, along with many more. The campaign ends on March 3rd. Order now to help fund the project. There are several editions in which you can order with different rewards. All editions will include your name in the credits, along with a free digital copy of the first-person shooter documentary. The series delivery is for March of 2025. Before that, there will be a year-long celebration of live horror events. This includes Q&As with horror devs, experts, and series creators. Find the full trailer, full cast, all the exclusive pre-sales merch, and more at the link in the description and pinned comment. With that, back to our regular scheduled programming. The sheer absurdity of Illbleed begins the moment you start a new game. The game has a pretty clever way of introducing us to our protagonist, Eriko. She's taken part in her high school speech competition. Her speech is about her childhood in a horror-filled family. For as long as I can remember, my family ran what we called a horror caravan. We hauled this house of horrors around from town to town, trying to give people a new thrill, a new nightmare. I kind of like traveling, but all that gruesome gore got to me after a while. My dad was always conjuring up new devices, tricks, and traps, each one scarier than the last. <laughs> Guess who he tried them out on? Yep, me. No! No! I guess it toughened me up a little. I mean, you have to be brave to walk through a den of snakes or try to avoid trap doors to make it to your room. I was a pretty fearless kid by the time I was five, thanks to my fearsome father. He fed on others' fears and was never satisfied. My mom couldn't stand how obsessed he'd gotten, so she thankfully divorced him when I was six. Yet I had gotten attached to horror. I remember how that good old Halloween pillow and a hot red water bath soothed me. I think I might major in child psychology. Hmm. Illbleed has a lack of lip movement while characters talk. I mentioned my video on Blue Stinger, the studio's previous title, how off timing the lip syncing could be. I guess this is one way of dealing with it. We're introduced to Eriko's merry band of friends. Kevin, Randy, who bears a strong resemblance to Brock from Pokemon, and Michelle. Through a promotion, Michelle was able to get tickets to the theme park Illbleed. Famed horror producer Michael Reynolds created Illbleed. There is a prize of $100 million to those who can make it through the park alive. No one yet has been able to do so. Kill! Look, we can win a hundred million bucks there! Yeah, if we can manage to get through the whole park, that is. No sweat. I'm game if you are. 
Sure thing. I'm with ya. <laughs> I love how the game manual notes that the prize money is in-game, and not real life. Erko declines the invitation, although she takes her ticket. A few days pass. Erko's friends haven't returned. She heads off to Illbleed to find them. Did you see three high school kids around here three days ago? They had special invites. What? <laughs> I love this intro. It sets the tone right away with the B-movie campy horror that Illbleed is going for. For a survival horror title, Illbleed takes a different approach to managing resources. There are plenty of interconnected, moving pieces that you need to consider. There are six stages in Illbleed. Each will have its own quirks and twists to the formula. We'll need to navigate our way through and disarm traps, or shock events as the manual calls them. We'll also have combat encounters throughout. To disarm these traps, we need to use our horror monitor. We don't begin each stage with it, we have to find it. The horror monitor tends to be very close to the starting zone, to the point where I wonder if starting us with the horror monitor would have made more sense. As you can see with the UI, a lot is going on here that we need to be aware of. At the top, we have the four senses sensor. Sight, hearing, smell, and sixth sense. The closer we get to a trap, the more corresponding reading will spike. How do you disarm these traps? You fire up the horror monitor and scan it. Your horror monitor makes use of your adrenaline meter. You use a little bit of adrenaline each time you fire up the horror monitor. You use up even more adrenaline each time you mark a potential trap. If you do mark a trap, approaching it will not set it off and replenish your adrenaline. Prepare to hear cool many times, along with other lines if you play other characters besides Eriko. Now, not everything you mark will be a trap. Illbly loves to put several areas of suspicion next to one another. Some will be a trap, some will not. Some can be pretty obvious, like a corpse on the ground or the markings of blood. You'll learn that you don't want to mark everything. You'll get a feel for what in a room will most likely be a trap. Even then, throughout the game, I'd still get hit by traps when I thought I'd disarm them. So if you're playing well, you're not going to be seeing many traps. Which is too bad, because Illbly has tons of unique trap animations. <laughs> There's a video compilation of all traps that I'll link to if you're interested. 31 minutes worth of them. I don't recall many repeats in my playthrough. It's too bad you couldn't do something like disarm the trap and have the option to see what the trap would have done. One amusing trap has a reference to the studio's previous game, Blue Stinger. The corpse of Dog's Bower drops down. <laughs> Poor Dogs. If there's anyone who I thought could make it through Illbleed beyond Erico, it would be Dogs. He could pay off his bar tab at Rat's Place, and then some. God damn son of a bitch. What happens when you get hit by a trap? Well, it depends on the trap. It can impact your three other parameters, your heart rate, bleeding rate, and hit points. You'd think hit points would be the most important. But in playing through the bleed, I found it to be the least of my concerns. One reason is how these parameters tie in with one another. For bleeding, if you reach a certain threshold, running will increase your bleeding. Once it reaches another threshold, your hit points will begin to decrease. Get high enough and it starts to drop your heart rate, which is beneficial for that parameter, but at this point you're almost toast. I found bleeding to be the parameter that I had to keep the closest eye on. Most traps will cause some kind of physical damage and bleeding. Not all though, but all traps will impact your heart rate. The higher your heart rate is, the more likely you are to faint from a trap or in combat. At this point, you can't do anything for a short stretch. It's even possible to die of a shock death from too high of a heart rate. What does the sixth sense meter represent? In some cases, there'll be items. In other cases, there'll be combat encounters. If you mark that trap, you'll enter a combat encounter with a level playing field. Otherwise, you'll begin the encounter knocked over. You'll need a bit of time to get up on your feet, starting you off at a disadvantage. Combat encounters can be amusing, tense affairs. There's a set space for combat that we need to remain in. We have a couple of options. Fight or flight. And by flight, I mean we call down a rope ladder from a helicopter to get us out of a combat encounter. Even indoors, the helicopter will still be able to pick us up. Hey, hurry up! 
What are the benefits and drawbacks of each? Enemies don't drop any items, but they will drop adrenaline upon death, a decent amount that could come in handy. Of course, you could be on the receiving end of damage. It's easy to rack up physical damage and bleed as a result. As well, you can't use items during combat, so you have to weigh your options if fighting is worth it. I love the frantic energy of combat. The controls are a bit loose and unwieldy. Not tank controls, but there's still a looseness to it. You never quite feel in total control over your character. Enemies can take a while to go down, but it's easy to juke around, get them running in a circle to get your hits in. And if combat encounters have more than one enemy, you can get enemies to hit each other. I love the blood splattering all over the place. Very fitting for the tone that Illweed goes for. There's a nice variety of enemies to deal with. These crash test dummies with their martial arts always gave me a laugh. Dodging offers some of the most generous invincibility frames I've come across in the game. There's a large window in which you'll receive no damage. But of course, there's always a trade-off in your bleed. A dodge increases your heart rate. Use it too often and you'll find yourself in trouble before you know it. I found boss encounters were the best time for using dodges. Normal encounters were better for running in circles and getting your hits in, or getting enemies to hit each other. Running from combat isn't a straightforward affair. You have to stand on the H on the ground to call the helicopter. While calling down the helicopter, you're vulnerable to attacks. The best course of action is to lure enemies away, dodge their attack, and call down the helicopter during their recovery. If all goes well, you can exit an encounter with zero losses. Otherwise, you may find yourself wishing you fought instead. There are several ways of replenishing your parameters. You can stand still to reduce your heart rate and bleeding. As well, you could use consumables. You'll only find a few throughout the stages. More connections to Blue Stinger here with Hassi healing your hit points. I love the description for the relaxation CD to decrease your heart rate. Sounds of dolphins, waves, and windblown trees. You could also get an erotic magazine to increase your heart rate. Doesn't exactly help you, but I still love that they included it. You could stock up at the store in the hub world with cash. Money is another resource you need to keep a close eye on in Illbleed. Completing stages will reward you with money. There is a deduction of money depending on several factors. One is how long it takes you to complete a stage. Of all the prize reductions, completion time was the hardest to avoid. These stages are long. Most can take more than an hour. In a couple of cases, they wear out their welcome. One of the larger issues I had with Hillbleed. Other prize deductions will depend on how many traps you cleared, along with the parameters at the end of the stage. In the earlier stages, right before you reach the end, you could use your item to replenish your parameters. This isn't the case later on. The last stretch of a stage will have a boss fight and then end. You'll want to use these consumables by stage end because they don't carry over to the next one. As a result, there is a balancing act before entering a new stage. How many consumables do you want to buy? Take too few and you may run into difficulties. Take too many and that money could have been better spent elsewhere, like upgrading our character stats. You can upgrade your stats in the hub world, but you're better off doing upgrades within stages. Some stages will give you access to the upgrade center. It's possible to find an item allowing for upgrade discounts within that stage. During the first three stages, we could rescue Kevin, Michelle, and Randy. We can now play as them. What happens if we die in a stage? We could switch to another character. With that character dead, we could go to the ER to bring them back to life for a pretty penny. It is possible to miss your friends altogether in these stages. In that case, you can bring them back to life to use, but that requires a large amount of cash. Cash would have been better spent elsewhere. Yeah, a lot is going on in Illbleed. There is a tutorial in the hub world, but it's easy to miss and head right to the stages. Even then, it's pretty bare bones with other covers. Illbleed is one of those games where you'll want to sit down with a manual beforehand. As well, some trial and error through gameplay will give you a feel of what to expect. By the time I beat the first stage, I had a good idea of getting a handle on things. With all these moving pieces, how well do they mesh with one another? Pretty good. It seems like a lot at first, but you get a feel for it. Like learning that of the parameters, hit points weren't an utmost priority. Ensuring I had enough to deal with bleeding and heart rate was more important. When you enter a new room, you can have a general idea of where to expect traps to come from even before booting up the horror monitor. You could run, but you have to be careful. You might run right into a trap. Your horror monitor might not give you enough notice in time. Then again, you don't want to walk at a snail's pace through stages. The bonus for completing stages under a certain time is one you'll want to get for money. With all these interconnected systems, I haven't played anything quite like Illbleed. For some smaller similarities, switching back and forth between third and first person reminded me of Fatal Frame. Marking areas in first person did somewhat remind me of Michigan Report from Hell, but only at a surface level. It's what's underneath where Illbleed stands out in its approach to survival horror. 
Before going through the stages, I have to compliment Illbleed on its stellar music, especially in comparison to Blue Stinger. There, every track was in your face at all times, utterly bombastic. There was next to no breathing room. That's not the case for Illbleed. To note, there's another fun Blue Stinger reference where Technician's ringtone is a song from Blue Stinger. Shoot, what kind of idiot is calling me at this hour? The track that plays in the hub world of Illbleed is a perfect tone setter very much in the vein of campy horror. It reminds me of Goosebumps, and it was a track that was stuck in my head for days. One track that plays during most stages is another highlight. It does a great job of building that tension as you make your way through rooms clearing out traps. Combat music tracks are great, especially the one that plays during boss fights. To help convey the sheer absurdity of Illbleed, I'm going to walk through the highlights of all the stages, so spoilers ahead. Through the hub world, we'll enter each stage through a theater entrance. Based on the movies that Michael Reynolds produced, we get a voiceover intro setting the stage for each one. And no, this isn't the same voice actor as the guy from Postal, although they do sound very similar. Starting off with the first stage, the home run of death. You play a sport, a game, knowing full well that you're going to either win or lose. You never expect to die before your dreams come true. Neither did Jimmy, or his father, Gail Banbalo, a Minnesota innkeeper. He set up a secret baseball practice arena in the basement of his inn, where he and his son practiced day after day. Jimmy's hard work and batting skills finally led his team to a state victory. It started out a crisp spring day, but before Jimmy could go outside to play, he and his dad went downstairs to bat the ball around a few times. Upstairs, some teenagers had been playing with fire, turning the inn into a raging blaze that was soon out of control. The inn was a total loss, and so was Jimmy, burned in minutes. Mr. Banbala was so badly maimed, he turned into a hideous monster, oozing and bleeding, snarling and growling like a beast, enraged and bent on revenge. He tracked down the kids responsible for the fire and killed them one by one with a blowtorch. That wasn't enough for Banbalo. He won't leave his inn or his memories, so there he waits, in ambush. Go see Vince. I was pretty hungover yesterday, but I think I remember where I work. Score some cash. Excellent. This setup is pretty gruesome, more than the other stages, but we'll soon see the silliness and absurdity that Illbleed has in store, like finding Jimmy's bat something we could use as a weapon in an amusing scene. These mementos will help us deal with his father. Jimmy! Jimmy! <laughs> Jimmy, it's time for practice! Get out to the training field now! Hey, you're not Jimmy! As I mentioned earlier, these stages tend to be pretty long in Yellweed. This stage offers a money bonus if we complete it under 50 minutes. That said, I didn't have any issues with this stage's length, but something that arises elsewhere. Using the mementos of Jimmy, we can get his dad Gale to appear. This room that acts as a shrine to Jimmy, where he practiced baseball, is pretty creepy. <laughs> But then the silliness returns stepping up to bat, with voice acting that went sound out of place on South Park. Number three, first base, Jimmy! Okay now, here we go! Jimmy! 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 
Infinity! Oh, Baba 3 Quest Base! Infinity Bus! I love Infinity Bus! In this grotesque form, Gale will now chase us through these maze like hallways. At first, we can't kill him, so we need to use the helicopter to escape. Once we get far enough in, we can now deal out damage to him. If we're fast enough in getting here, we can rescue Kevin and unlock him as a character. Otherwise, we'll have to pay a nice chunk of change in the hub world to resurrect him to use. Kevin, are you alright? Oh, uh, what the... Erico! Oh, this is the worst place to be right now. Let's get out of here! Woohoo, yeah! You're our savior. I'll help you any way I can, you hear me? You're crazy. A giant gale returns in a chase scene. This is where I discovered the power of Illbleed's invincibility frames. You activate dodge in the ballpark of the incoming attack and you'll be fine. We find our way to a control room and it turns out this giant gale is being controlled by a technician. The pressure on the leg is a bit too high. I bet it's the right leg. Last time I checked, it was a bit rusty. That's all right. It's still within control parameters. Then what are you planning to do for dinner tonight? I'm starving. I think I'll have fish or something. At this point, meat doesn't sound too appetizing. <laughs> yeah, we've got enough meat laying around over here to feed an army of rats. Help! Stop right there. This area is restricted to authorized personnel only. Please! I can't fight that poor beast myself! I know. Isn't that cool? We spent five million dollars to build this enormous thing we call Van Bottle. So what does Erico do? Smash the controls? No, she bludgeons the technician to death with a baseball bat. Turns out, the technician's a robot. With that, stage one is complete. Stage two, the revenge of Queen Worm twists the formula of Illbleed. You'll notice it in the stage prize requirements. Far shorter runtime and no traps? What's going on here? When we grab the horror monitor, a monkey or a monk killer steals it. For some reason, this allows them to see us naked. <laughs> when I first played stage 2, I decided to try out Kevin. It's here where one of Illbleed's largest issues becomes clear. There's not much incentive to play any of the other characters beyond Eriko. Her upbringing in a horror-filled family results in her having far less fear than her friends. Her heart rate increases at a far lower rate, from getting hit by traps and while dodging. Entering my first combat encounter as Kevin, his heart rate shot through the roof. I didn't stock up on heart rate reducing items because I didn't have any issues with Erico prior. Before I knew it, Kevin died a shock death with that sky-high heart rate of his. Michelle has high adrenaline but is weak in her other parameters. Randy has low levels of adrenaline but is strong in his other parameters. Yet Erico's base stats were far easier to manage than the others. It made sense to upgrade her stats. I'd only use the others if I died as Erico. Illbleed is somewhat generous with save points throughout. It wasn't a huge issue to reload if I died as Erico instead of trying out with another character. As funny as Illbleed can be, one point that's lacking is the inner party banter with Erico and her friends. Some of Blue Stinger's best moments were dogs, Elliot, and Janine bickering at one another. Merry Christmas! It's now the 25th. Oh, this is the worst Christmas I ever had. Damn, it's my payday. Did you miss a date tonight? No way. Let's go. Beyond the game's intro, rescuing them, and one of the endings, there's no dialogue between Erico and her friends. If you hadn't have shown up, God knows what that slimy monkey would have done to me. So you were the one who was calling for help. You received my telepathic message. Oh, that's so cool. From now on, I am with Erico. I feel very strong. This is too bad because I'm talking with one another in the intro was so much fun to listen to. From a gameplay standpoint, it is understandable. It's possible that we may not have all characters in tow. Some may be dead. Dialogue bits within stages are more generic as a result. It's more of us listening than taking part of what's going on. Illbleed is so strong in other areas with the other insanity it throws your way. But it is a bummer to see that inner party banter not present after how enjoyable it was in Blue Stinger. One possible solution could have had allowed us to talk with the others in the hub world between levels. Stage 2 begins with us navigating through these streets, the junkyard being our end goal. I love the various billboard advertisements like Mummy Popcorn and Hassie. Revenge of Queen Worm has quite the oddball story. 
David Rodriguez strikes gold by producing 10 times more worms than the average thanks to his queen worm. However, the gold rush ends as the price of worms drop. He expanded too fast and refused a large initial buyout. David can no longer feed his beloved Rachel, who he keeps mentioning in his notes and takes his own life. But his spirit lingers on. We find that spirit inside the gas station. He's a dead ringer for Hide the Pain Herald. Thanks for coming. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Ever since the Drond Corporation cheated me, I've had a hard time trusting anyone. I apologize. By the way, I want to ask you a favor. You seem decent and trustworthy. It's about my beloved Rachel. I wrote the details in my will. It's all right here. Please read it, will ya? Please? He wants us to kill Rachel so they could be in the next world again. Yes, the Rachel he is referring to is the Queen Worm. Rachel? Please burn Rachel, please! That giant worm is Rachel? We'll need to grab a flamethrower for us to kill her. In the junkyard, if we step on the ground, we'll enter a combat encounter with Rachel. We can't do any damage and can only escape. So we have to do the old Tremors trick and jump on cars and knock over billboards to grab the flamethrower. Controls are loose with jumping, but far better than Blue Stinger. When I screwed up, it felt less a case of me blaming the controls. I love the movie billboards during this stretch. The eyes wide shut and Godzilla knockoffs are the most notable. With the flamethrower in tow, we can now damage Rachel. And with that, we have one of the funnier moments I've come across the game with Rachel and David reunited. The one I started the video with. At last, we can be together forever! Let's go back to hell. Hey you, young one! Thank you. I'll never forget your kindness. How could you not love Ill Bleed? The first stretch of stage two is a bit of a drag, running through the streets and fighting worms. But once you get to the junkyard and deal with David and Rachel, it's sheer bliss and a highlight of Ill Bleed. Stage three, Wood Puppets, returns to how things were back in stage one. Traps are back in play. There are plenty of absurd bits throughout stage three, like the Lumberjack song. Who who's going to cut the tree, going to cut the tree, and I got to cut the tree, cause I love to cut the tree. Yo ho ho, and I'm out of control, I gotta cut the tree. For the first stretch, we'll be fighting wood puppets. They have this amusing spinning arm helicopter attack. Randy, our friend who looks like Brock from Pokemon, appears to be stuck in a wood puppet's body. We could rescue him during this stage. As we progress, we turn to a wood puppet. We take part in woodman hunting. As a wood puppet, we have to make it to the end of this maze dealing with woodmen. We get access to their attacks that are sheer fun, the ones we dealt with while fighting them. One is a spinning low kick, the other is a spinning helicopter arm attack. They make short work of the woodmen. That said, this section drags on for far too long. Corridors are long and full of woodmen. This is one of the cases where Ilbli could have chopped down its length. It's not a long game, but parts like this drag on far longer than need be. Navigating through these corridors is where Illbleed starts to remind me of Knights of the Old Republic. Not in the gameplay, but in the way these corridors look and in their size. Plus it feels like I'm playing C-3PO in the way I'm walking here, reminding me of Star Wars. Near the end of the stretch, we can rescue Randy. There are a couple of variations of how it could turn out. One involves restoring his brain, else if you miss it, he'll be missing his brain moving forward, having no adrenaline. Granted, he doesn't seem like the sharpest tool in the shed even with a brain, but he's loyal to his friends. Phew! I'm sad! I couldn't recognize anything because I had no brain! Calm down, Randy. Everything's gonna be fine. You'll see. Whoa! You're Erica? You came here just in time! I'm sick and tired of looking like this! Let's get out of here! After returning to normal, we'll fight the stage's boss, after some technical difficulties. Sorry, uh, we're having trouble getting the boss character out. Uh, hold on a second, please. Hey, we got another customer waiting here. Hurry up! Try turning on the switch again! Okay, here goes. Ah! 
Nah, nothing doing. This is gonna be a nightmare. Y you over there, uh, go ahead and jump into it and keep going. I'll try to get it to work from here. It takes a bit to whittle down that health, but those iframes while dodging are oh so handy. As far as these six stages go, stage three is a bit ho-hum. There's still lots of fun, silly moments, but it does drag on longer than it needs to be. Stage four, the killer department store, throws another twist our way. Instead of earning the prize money at the end, we get it all at the beginning. Getting hit by certain traps will reduce our earnings. <laughs> There are several absurd situations throughout, like dealing with this talking hellcake. He's missing something on his head. How about this sweet strawberry I found? No! No! I don't need this! Well, he is a cake from hell after all. What about a severed head? Oh yeah! This is just what I needed. Complete at last! Thanks to you, I'm complete again. Why not take me with you? This head makes me look so fabulously fiendish, darling. By the way, for great strength and energy, why not take a bite of me? There's a bit where we could pick up beef, pork, and chicken to feed cockroaches blocking our way. There's no limit to how much of each we can take. Why does Ill Bleed allow this? Well, right after the cockroaches, we head into a steakhouse. The chef throws us on a giant grill, and now we fight all those pieces we picked up. As I stocked up without a care in the world, I end up fighting several pieces of beef, chicken, and pork. What you waiting for? Get you and your meat up on the now, you hear? The toy store section is an amusing stretch. Look at all these ridiculous prices. I guess $100 million wouldn't go as far here as it would elsewhere. One item on display is the Mega Dream, a combination of the Sega Mega Drive and the Sega Dreamcast, all for the low price of $16,000. Gets me wondering, what would Sega's next system have looked like if they continued past the Dreamcast? There are a few toys we'll see here that will appear later on. Quark and Sexy Doll. Yes, Sexy Doll is her name. But follows is one of Eobleed's most frustrating sections, dealing with this Mary Doll. Despite the spelling being Mary, she pronounces her name as Marie. Hello, I'm Marie. I bet you can't wait to check out my new products. But meanwhile, why not stop by my corner for a real good time? I can't wait for you to stop by and see me. We'll have lots of fun. Promise, don't be long now. I'll meet you inside. We have to make our way through a maze while she chases us. She's vicious and her hits do play him damage. It doesn't help that the music is grating during this section, but that seems like an intentional choice. In the next section, we play hide and seek with her. She hides in a room full of objects. Your whore monitor is of no use here. From what I understand, it's random of where she will hide. Ever the sore loser, she attacks us afterwards. Ah! How, how did you find me? That should have been impossible! Ooh, I hate you, I hate you! Mary has one last challenge for us, a game of jump rope. Seems simple enough, but looks are deceiving. Ten jumps, but the rope speeds up over time. There's a bit of a delay between hitting the button and our character jumping. This took me several tries to get through. And for one last trick up her sleeve, the last jump slows down instead of speeding up. With Mary now of the way, we get cathartic ending capping off the stage. At the end is a giant invincible money spider. We go and grab the remote control for the spider, assuming direct control. With that, all we need to do is ram it into the wall until it dies. After all the frustrations of dealing with Mary, we've earned this. Despite the frustrations with the Mary section, this is one of the better stages. It doesn't have any pacing issues like some of the other ones do. 
Stage 5, Killer Man, is my least favorite of the stages. It starts fine, but grinds to a halt with a momentum killing stretch in the back half. Still, it has some Veil Bleed's funnier moments. This stage takes place behind the scenes. There is a murder about, a killer leaving their MO, known as Killer Man. Or is it? Could it be someone else? Here we made a reporter named Yorg. He looks like a giant baby with that face of his. There are a few characters who are possible suspects. Those working behind the scenes. Could one of them be Killer Man? What about Yorg? What about us? And at one point, Illbleed will ask us. Now that you've gathered the clues you need, we're going to challenge your ability to solve the murder case. Try and use your clues to solve who the murderer is. If you come up with the right killer, you'll get a game cash bonus after clearing this stage. So who do you think the serial killer is? Come on, you can figure it out. Can't you? Is the game throwing us for a loop? Is there some convoluted subvert expectations as an answer? Well, no, it turns out to be Killer Man. Thing is, while I picked Killer Man as the culprit, I didn't eliminate Yorg as a suspect. At one point, Yorg gets kidnapped and I didn't save him. Why didn't I? Well, the reason why I dislike the stage the most is the morgue section, where all the bodies of those who failed to make it through Illbleed end up. In the words of the director from Manhunt, they're stacking corpses like it's Judgment Day. Who? What died in here? Just about everything, duh. It's a morgue, silly. A morgue? Yeah, where they keep the stiffs. Illbleed is full of dead bodies. More than a hundred visitors die in this park every day. This is where the bodies get burned and forgotten. It's not exactly the high point of the park. This is really weird. It feels like spirits are swirling around my body. I hear ya. It's like a cold mist. This stretch goes on for what feels like forever. Paths that end. You have to be looking at your map over and over to ensure you're going the right way. As well, there are long stretches with no traps. So instead of going out of my way to find Yorg, I took the shortest path to the end. As a result, Yorg isn't eliminated as a suspect. Too bad because you get a nice chunk of change if you do. There's a horde of zombies you come across in this morgue and you're given a shotgun. These are some resilient zombies. Taking their heads clean off did nothing to stop them. The fight against Killer Man can be pretty tricky. He takes a while to whittle down and has several attacks to keep us on our toes. And look at this arena of his. Talk about morbid. It's too bad the morgue section kills this level down its tracks as far as enjoyment goes. The end boss is fun and the beginning is full of intrigue with its whodunit. But Illbleed makes up for it and then some. For Illbleed saves its best, most absurd for its final stage. Stage 6, Toy Hunter, Court Goes to Hell. To say this stage goes places is an understatement. It's one of the more memorable stretches I played in the game. Remember back in the department store stage, those toy characters Cork and Sexy Doll? In this stage, we're turned into Cork, a cross between Woody from Toy Story and Indiana Jones. With a stage name of Cork Goes to Hell, you know right away we're in for a trip. Buckle up, things are about to get wild. You're about to enjoy Toy Hunter's new story, Cork Goes to Hell. Cork returns from his adventures in Mexico, but his beloved Sexy Doll is missing. Cork saying her name seemed to get funnier each time he'd say it. Oh, sexy doll. Sexy doll. I wanted to see you one last time. Sexy doll has gone to hell. Why? Well, her owner died. So does the kid go to hell as well? Like David and Rachel back in stage two? As Cork, we need to go to hell to reunite with his beloved sexy doll. While playing as Cork, we have access to his pistol, which makes short work of enemies. There are more twists to the ill bleed formula. While many traps remain, others are story traps. Instead of marking these story traps, you leave them be and approach them to play out a story beat. I love Quark's, yep, when he disarms a trap. When it's down to a place with Hank and the boys. Yep. And these story traps get out there, like Quark having a milk drinking problem and murdering eggs. Not before they sing to us. Do you know the dog and Quark, hey, I know this boy so well. He couldn't save his sexy doll. He ended up in hell. And the forest takes his young man down. He's chicken through and through. There is no bigger coward, no. There's, There's nothing, nothing he can do. Yeah. For his crimes, Cork ends up in Alcatoys. Yes. Alcatoys. Props to the one who came up with that. Cork is now in death row for the murder of the eggs. 
but this will allow him to go to hell and reunite with Sexy Doll. In jail, we meet Podadon, a Buzz Lightyear knockoff. I love how when we first meet him, we get the prominent Made in China labeling. Hey, you! What are you doing over there? You came just in time. I tried to escape from this prison, but I ran out of gas. Hey! Aren't you Cork? Who couldn't save the sexy doll? <sighs> it is you! My name is Potidon. I've been in prison for 19 years. But first things first, buddy. Don't just stand there. Find me some gasoline. Once I'm loose, I'll tell you a great story. Set for death by hanging, Potodon saves us. Why? Well, it turns out this will send us to regular hell. The one that Rachel and David went back to in stage 2. We want to go to toy hell. Because of course, toys have their own hell. Why did you interrupt my execution? I was on my way to see Sexy Doll again. I did that because I found out you shouldn't get executed after all. Why? After you left, I checked the toy bible again, and I realized I remembered it wrong. You see, the type of hell in which Sexy Doll is being held is called Toy Hell. It's the hell toys go through if the toys get buried in the grave along with its owner. If you die in any other way, you just go to plain old hell, which is not what Sexy Doll is waiting for you. Ooh, that wouldn't have been Yeah, good. that was close, my friend. If I had shown up a minute later, you'd have died for nothing. So as a toy, we need to find a new owner, have them die, and then we can go to toy hell. Wait, is the game gonna go there with this child? No, it turns out they're going to knock him out and make everyone think he's dead so we could descend to toy hell. That's it! Here, we can use this and shoot that kid. Catch! Are you serious? You're gonna use this? We're not gonna kill him for real. Just knock him unconscious with this. We're gonna make people think he's dead. Use this and shoot that kid. Now's the chance. Shoot him! Me? I'm the one to shoot him? Now's the chance. Shoot him! <laughs> Jeremy! What happened? Jeremy! But seems like they bury the child anyway, so what happens here? And what's waiting for us there? Well, Cork's beloved sexy doll, but we have one final roadblock to deal with first. One demonic force. <laughs> Zodic the Hellhog. Yes, a demonic Sonic. Did I mention I love Illbleed? You have to shoot him to drop his rings and then shoot the rings. So I made a mistake earlier in the stage that turned out to be a blessing. As mentioned earlier, to get these story beats in the level, you don't scan them like a normal trap. You set them off to get them. Well, there were a couple of times by force of habit I disarmed them, missing these story beats. One of them in the cemetery introduces Zodic, which I'm glad to have missed. Having him appear here for the first time in Toy Hell was far funnier. There is no way Illbleed could top this, hence it being the last stage before the final encounter. There weren't any sections here that I found dragged down the pacing. Of course, the game dialing up the sheer absurdity to 11 didn't hurt. As off-kilter and goofy Illbleed can be, Quirk Goes to Hell takes it to a whole new level. It's a big reason why Illbleed is one of the funniest games I've played. They went out of their way to make things over the top and silly and being earnest about it, nailing that B-movie horror vibe in a variety of ways across the different stages, all leading up to a final stage where it goes all out in its absurd nature. I miss this kind of humor, something lacking in most modern games. Well, modern entertainment in general, kind of humor where all characters throw witty one-liners and quips at each other. It's something you could only find in the Japanese game. It's something you could only find during a time frame when publishers weren't afraid to throw things out there and see what sticks. While Illbleed can stumble at points, it's sheer ridiculous and humor more than makes up for it. Day on a family fair. If you like, 
<laughs> oh, brother. That's about all the softy stuff I can handle for you. Having completed all stages, Michael Reynolds has one more challenge for us at his museum. We take our pick of our last encounter. The Fear Spider, a Blue Stinger, and Oh No Man. I mean, a name like Oh No Man, how could I not pick him? It's a pretty easy fight, although it takes some time to take him down. With that, we've made our way through Illbleed. The hundred million dollars is ours. Yes. Excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> I haven't heard this much excitement in a long time. <laughs> Very well then, I shall present you with one hundred million dollars. And here, for the fanfare, is the Michael Reynolds Orchestra. Bye-bye. There are three possible endings to Illbleed. You get the bad ending if you don't rescue everyone. That includes Yorg the Reporter. It's a bittersweet ending. An aged Erico, despite winning the money, would give it back in a heartbeat if it meant her friends were still alive. It's odd that if you don't revive at least one of your friends, you get this ending. It acts like everyone is dead. I'd gladly give back the money if I could get them back. But all I can do is pray that they rest in peace. Goodbye, my friends. I'll miss you a lot. In the ending in which you rescue everyone, the four friends are on an island. It's odd that they mention winning a million dollars as opposed to a hundred million dollars. Randy and Michelle show a different approach to where they put their money. How are we gonna spend a million bucks? I bought 385 different kinds of Freddy dolls, and I still have a lot left. I invested in the stock market. You really trust the stock market? I don't know. How would Michelle's investment in the stock market play out? One item we can find in stages is Amazon, a very helpful item that heals all parameters. What if she invested in Amazon back then? Illbleed came out in the West on April 16th, 2001. I'm writing this part of the script on February 16th, 2024, so let's use those two months as endpoints. Using a stock return calculator with dividends, that would be a return of 21,384.16%. What about Apple stock? 47,216.38%. What if she bought SPY, a stock that tracks the S&P 500? 503.35%. Now to be fair, the stock of Amazon and Apple puts away for a long time during this time frame. This is not long after the dot-com bubble. As well, it was not until the last few years that Apple and Amazon stock would grow at an insane rate. I hope she didn't buy any Enron stock at this time. In the world of Illbleed, I wonder if she invested in Hassey stock. What does Erico do? She makes an interesting decision. I'm going back to Illbleed. What? 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 If she goes, I go! Thanks, Randy. But this time, I have to go alone. Why? What's going on? Kevin, butt out! She doesn't need a guy right now, okay? Wait for me, guys. If I make it back, I'll probably be a changed girl. We'll be right here, waiting and praying. I'm sure you'll make it through, but be careful. And don't change too much. If you get into trouble, try and telepathically communicate with me, okay? I can be at your side in no time. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. I love you all. But there's one more possible ending to Illbleed. One that requires another playthrough on New Game Plus. As much as I enjoy Illbleed, doing another playthrough to unlock a few minutes of differences wasn't appealing. This ending footage comes from YouTube. To get this ending, you don't save anyone. For whatever reason, as the game progresses, Erko's clothes get more torn up. To the point that once you reach the Michael Reynolds Museum, she might as well be naked. YouTube will no doubt flag this if I don't cover up. She is 18 according to the manual, so at least they covered their bases. 
this time Michael Reynolds comes down to see Erico for a closer look. And we're in for another surprise of who Michael Reynolds is. Oh yeah, baby. Now that's what I call a body. Whoa. Oh, come a little closer. I mean, you're going to need someone. Uh, something to warm you up, hon. Uh, I'll get you a blanket. As he could no longer scare Eriko, he made Illbleed for that sole purpose, to once again scare her. And Eriko herself wants to be able to feel fear once again. That's why she returned to Illbleed. Eriko scares her dad before he turns into a grotesque final form. With that final act, he's able to scare Eriko once again. Her sense of fear returns. Oh my god. I can't believe it. You actually destroyed yourself. You finally did it. You scared the living hell out of me. Although a bit too much, but never fear, Kevin is here. The new president of the Horror Research Club will now be me, Kevin Kurtzman, due to the fact that our old president, Erico, is just not the same anymore. Poor Erico. Once fearless and strong, she turned into a vulnerable little girl who needs a fearless knight in shining armor to protect her, like me. Yeah. And the sad part is, I can't go to the horror house with her anymore. And so ends Illbleed, one of the most absurd, hilarious games I've played. There's nothing quite like it out there. It's one of those games that deserves a larger audience. It's a title that suffered from outside circumstances with its release timing. The same month as it launched in Japan, March of 2001, hardware production The Dreamcast ended. Sales were around 50,000 units far lower than the studio's previous title, Blue Stinger, which moved around half a million. The studio, Crazy Games, which rebranded from Climax Graphics, closed down in December of 2002. But Illbleed, along with Blue Stinger, almost saw ports to the Xbox. Due to low Xbox sales in Japan, they never saw the light of day. On a sadder note, the founder of Crazy Games, Shinya Nishigaki, who was the writer and producer of Blue Stinger and Illbleed, would die of a heart attack in 2004 at the age of 42. I'm not sure how much his death had an impact on the cancellation of the ports. He and most of the Crazy Games staff would end up at the game studio Cavia, working on other projects. Despite its release as a Dreamcast exclusive, Sega did not publish Illbleed, unlike Blue Stinger. Searching for who owns the rights of Illbleed brought up nothing conclusive. Crazy Games self-published Illbleed in Japan. The publisher of Illbleed in the West has long since gone out of business. I would love to see Illbleed get to do with a remaster, but it seems that, like so many obscure games from this era, your only options are emulation like I've done here or finding a copy. Which, while not as high priced as other rare games, still goes for a pretty penny. I've said this for a few games I've covered on this channel, but if you're a budding indie developer looking for inspiration, consider Illbleed. It's a mishmash of ideas and sheer hilarity makes it one of a kind. I love to see someone take the idea and run with it, a spiritual successor. And hey, it'll sure help your game stand out from the crowd, something that illbly remains to this day. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, like and subscribe, leave comments. If you'd like to support the channel further, do consider becoming a patron or YouTube member. You'll get access to videos earlier, you'll get periodic updates, and you'll be featured in the upcoming credits. Lock him up for 500 years. No, we shall get a death penalty. I hear ya, I hear ya. Yeah, kill the bum and send him to hell. Roger that. <laughs>